Winter's in Michigan. For some, it's a season of chores. For others, a season of joy. But there's one thing this season we can all agree on is that winter will be different. The cost of everything seems to be going up, and that includes the cost of heating your home. So I thought I'd take a road trip to learn about how we can get through this winter together. So today, we're in Jackson. Home to Consumers Energy. You can see it right there. Home to the Bright Walls exhibit, also started by two Consumers Energy employees. I set up a coffee meeting at Jackson Coffee Co. with Brandon Hoffmeister and Carolyn Bloodworth to learn more about the need and what Consumers Energy is doing to help Michiganders. I know in a uh, typical year, consumers would be thinking about increases in heating and, and the needs of Michiganders, but this is not a typical year. So I'm wondering if maybe you could talk me through the issue and then kind of what you guys are doing about it. Yeah, for sure. So. On a normal year, uh, people's energy bills go up in the winter because they're using a lot more natural gas and even electricity to heat their homes. Uh, and this year, I think it's no surprise that inflation has been rampant everywhere. Uh, we're seeing that in food prices, you're seeing that um, in housing prices, and you're also seeing that we're seeing it in energy prices. Uh, natural gas prices have more than doubled uh, from what they have been for the past couple of years. Um, and so it people's heating bills are going to go up this winter. And so people count on us, we know, to provide reliable, safe, affordable energy. And our commitment is to do everything we can to make sure that the bills are as low as possible and to give people control and options to reduce their bills. All of us here are Michiganders and we serve our friends and neighbors. And so we deeply care about the impact that we have um, on residents in our state. We also um, take that responsibility seriously and we're a big company, we have a lot of resources, but we also are completely committed to one state, to one geography in the state of Michigan. So things in 2020 were very dire. Um, there was a lot of, um, I think, uh, emergent need. And we were helping small businesses, we were helping individuals and families. But as we come into 2022 and looking forward to 2023, there still is a great deal of struggle. There are still a lot of people that are in great need. Um, a lot of the crises that may have not been emergent or on fire in 2020, they're still there today. So we have a lot of different um, programs that people trust us as an energy provider to help guide them on how they can lower their energy usage. And we also know that many uh, of our customers are gonna struggle to make ends meet because of inflation that's happening all over our economy right now. And so we have made donations, approximately $10 million in donations to our nonprofit partners that help to provide bill assistance for people that are really in a pinch and, and are struggling to pay their bills. And then we also work with our partners in the state and federal governments to provide access for our customers to access a number of different um, government programs that can provide assistance. One of the things I wanted to make sure I asked them about was 211. 211 is a free resource for anyone in Michigan to call. Actually, you can use it nationwide. It's a local call and you will speak to people with local resources. So if you have a need for your energy bill, you need assistance with your energy bill, your water bill, you need to find a good source for diapers or mental health services or even a good medical care. 211 has a list of local resources that they can provide to you and they can help to direct you to the help that you need. If you haven't asked for assistance before, sometimes it can take courage. Sometimes there's a self-esteem issue about asking someone else for help that I think we all have a role to play in helping people overcome. Everybody struggles at, at certain times, um, no matter where you came from. And it is not a sign of weakness. It's not, um, it, if you need assistance, there are a lot of programs to help you. Um, I think back to when I was a kid, um, you know, I come from a single family home and my, my mom, I look back in retrospect, struggled to make ends meet. I mean, I don't know that we would have gotten by without the help of food assistance and uh, subsidized rental assistance and things like that. Um, in, when I was a kid, I didn't recognize that that was going on because my mom had the fortitude to, to seek help. Um, but as an adult, I can look back and say, oh my God, our, our Christmas tree one year was decorated with the little Ronald McDonald ornaments from Happy Meals because we didn't have money to buy Christmas ornaments that year. Um, and 
she got there through the help of others, and I'm really thankful um, that she reached out and got that assistance and shielded me from um, what could have been a really tough couple of winters. All this talk about Consumers Energy's culture had me thinking about the infectious nature of the desire to help other people. You know, you are in charge or charged with making sure that the money gets where it needs to be to help Michiganders mm -hmm. while working for a company that's one of those bills they have to pay, right? right? At the same time though, you're doing an employee match up to $1,000. Mm -hmm. And I'm wondering, how does that radiate out into the communities where the consumers' employees work? I think the culture of our company throughout the 135 years has always been to care for our communities, our neighbors, and our friends. And that starts at home. And home is often work because we spend a lot of time at work. But what we see is we see employees engaging and at the office you'll see boxes and bins where people are donating hats and scarves and it just seems to multiply. And we're part of those communities and we want to give back. And so that's probably one of the best parts of my job is I get to see that and I get to be able to help people and I get to help make sure that they're directed to the nonprofits that are doing the most good in their communities. It's incredibly rewarding. The last thing I was thinking about was success of these programs. How will Consumers Energy know these programs work this winter? Well, we really want to make sure that everyone that needs help has access to the help that they need. That 211 is being utilized, that our low income payment assistance are being utilized, that the state's programs for heating assistance, the state tax credit that is provided to people are being fully utilized by everyone that needs assistance this winter. If you need help, getting it is easy. Head to consumersenergy.com backslash cold weather or dial 211.